In this video we are going to take a look at turning right at traffic lights, in particular control crossroads. When we say control crossroads we just mean that the crossroads are controlled by traffic lights. So if you learn to drive and just starting to get out onto some busier roads, or maybe just a little confused about turning right at traffic lights, then I'm sure this video is going to help you. Because this video is made up of short clips, each clip has different information and tips. So if you can bear to watch, hopefully it will help you to understand turning right at traffic lights a little better. Crossroads are often referred to as accent black spots and cause quite a bit of confusion amongst new drivers. However, if you understand them and treat them correctly, they really are quite easy and much easier to learn than roundabouts. When you are turning right at crossroads and you have oncoming traffic that also want to turn right, we have two ways of turning. We have near side and near side and off side to off side. But what do I mean when we say near side and near side or off side to off side? Before we look at some clips, let's take a look at a couple of diagrams. Let's look at what side of the car is on the near side and which is the off side. If we park up on the left hand side of the road, the passenger side is the nearest to the curb. Therefore the passenger side is the near side and the driver's side is furthest away, so the driver's side is the off side. So when you're turning right, if your passenger side is closest to the passenger side of the oncoming car, you are turning near side and near side. However, if you go around the oncoming car and pass behind it, you are turning off side, off side. Off side, off side is considered the safest way to turn because when you are sat in the middle, you don't have a vehicle in front blocking your view. But because this type of turn is seldom used, in this video we are going to take a look at the near side and near side turn. In 35 years of driving, I can't actually remember the last time I turned off-site, off -site. But always remember though, the oncoming car one day could attempt to turn off-site, off -site, so be prepared for it. Later in the video, we do have an example of an off-site, off -site turn. As a general rule, if you're turning left or following the road ahead at control crossroads, it is your priority over oncoming traffic, so it's quite straightforward. However, turning right is a little more difficult. On the approach, always use your mirror signal manoeuvre routine, the same as you would for any other junction. You will have been learning this on your driving lessons with your driving instructor. If you are turning right and there is more than one lane, you will normally need the right hand lane. Lights are on green so move forward past your stop line so that you're in a better place to go when you get the chance. As we move forward the main difference here from a normal right turn is the turning point. Our normal turning point to turn right into a side road would be about here on line with the centre line of the new road. But because we also have to think about oncoming traffic who also want to turn right, if we go too far forward there wouldn't be enough space for us both to turn. So just stay back a bit. Our lights might be on green, but we still need to give way to oncoming traffic. Look ahead and anticipate a safe gap in the traffic. Final right hand door mirror check and be ready to go when you get the chance. When you enter the new road, check your mirrors again to update on traffic behind. Always start your mirror signal manoeuvre routine in good time. Again at the next set of lights, we'll turn right. Check interior and right hand door Now in this case we have a junction on the right, so we need to time the signal as we pass the side road. Check the road markings, we need the right hand lane again. The lights are on red here, so we'll stop at the stop line. 
Usually at crossroads, when you get the green light, the oncoming traffic will also be on green at the same time. And traffic to the left and right will be on red. If you're going to be stationary for more than a short space of time, or on a hill, apply your handbrake to secure your car when you stop. If you're near the front of the queue, make sure you've selected first gear and keep your clutch pedal down so you're ready when the lights change. Once you get more experienced and confident, if you know that lights aren't going to change for a while, you could apply your handbrake and select neutral and give your feet a rest. Sometimes you might be able to see the traffic lights pointing in the other directions and if they aren't green, you know that your lights aren't going to change just yet. As the lights go on to green, we'll move forward, but not too much. We still need to give way to oncoming traffic. Many sets of crossroads also have a secondary traffic light on the other side of the road. So when you're in the centre of the junction waiting to turn right, you can still see when the lights start to change. This set also has a right-hand filter light. Anticipate your chance to go by looking ahead for safe gaps in the traffic and set your gas and find the biting point ready just before your chance arrives. Anticipating a gap and getting your feet ready just before your chance arrives will massively reduce your chances of stalling in the middle of the crossroads. Many learners tend to stall in these situations because they wait until a chance is there. They then panic and bring the clutch up too quick. Not all sets of crossroads are perfectly lined up like the ones that we've seen so far. There can be slightly different layouts, but the idea is still the same. The other road bends slightly to the left ahead, and on your approach we don't have a separate lane to turn right. Assess the crossroads as you approach and where's the safest place to position your car in the middle. Move into a position in the middle where you won't obstruct other traffic and where you won't come into conflict with oncoming traffic. Here I'm going to steer slightly right. This will tell the oncoming car turning right that I want to take the near side and near side turn and also allow the traffic behind to get past safely. But I also need to be careful not to steer too far to the right that I position into the oncoming traffic. You can read what other drivers also intend to do by making eye contact and also looking at which way the wheels are pointing. Remember to keep updating your mirrors and looking into your new road for hazards. Anticipate your gap, feet ready and go when it's safe. If you're on a dual carriageway, you will usually need to change lanes if you are turning right at traffic lights. Make sure you use your mirror signal manoeuvre routine and a quick sideways glance to change lanes safely. A green arrow on a traffic light means that we can fill in the direction that the arrow is pointing, even if the main light is not shown green. Filter lights can point left, right or straight ahead. If you get one of these, it should be safe for you to continue. However, still look out and listen for any emergency vehicles, and if it's safe, give them priority. Here we have two vehicles in front of us also turning right. Now we don't want too many cars waiting in the centre, because if the lights change to red, we might not have enough time to get round ourselves. Especially if one of the cars is a bit slow at moving off. So I'm going to wait behind the stop line. The traffic's now starting to turn and on this occasion we're lucky we've got the filter light turning right so we can carry on straight round. Sometimes the crossroads will be clearly marked out in the middle like this one. This leaves us in no doubt at all that at these set of crossroads we need to turn the S side and the S side. You might get diagonal lines like these ones. These lines are to stop you from going too far forward and could be broken or a solid white line. Be careful not to go over these diagonal lines. 
If you do, then you could come into conflict with oncoming traffic also turning right. Some traffic light control junctions have advanced stop lines to allow cyclists to be positioned ahead of other traffic. You can see the markings here. If you need to stop, stop at the first white line so you're not blocking the marked area. Allow cyclists time and space to move off when the green signal shows. We've just got a green light this time, there's no filter light, so move forward and give way to oncoming traffic. You can see the diagonal line again here. Remember, don't cross it. Our next set of crossroads we are going to take a look at has a box junction in the middle. Box junctions have crisscross yellow lines painted on the road. And the purpose of box junctions is to keep the junction clear. The rules of a box junction are that you must not enter the box unless your exit road or lane is clear. However, you may enter the box and wait when you want to turn right and are only prevented from doing so by oncoming traffic. Our lights are on green and we are turning right, so this situation we can move forward onto the box junction. There's no filter light here, so we need to give way to oncoming traffic. If you block a box junction it can result in a fine so be careful. In this video we are only covering turning right at traffic lights. It doesn't include dealing with box junctions in other directions or how to deal with a box junction on a roundabout. If you are unsure or have any questions ask your driving instructor for more information. All vehicles, especially larger ones like vans, buses and lorries, can often hide something following behind them. Motorbikes or cyclists can be especially hard to see in this situation, so be careful not to commit yourself to turning until you've had a good look. What could be hiding behind this oncoming bus? Always anticipate what could happen and always use good effective observations. When did you first see the white van that was behind the bus? Let's rewind the video. You can see here that the white van is clearly visible if you are looking ahead. And then it disappears behind the bus. So be careful when you are set at traffic lights to not just sit there and stare at the traffic lights waiting for them to change. Use the time to keep checking all of your mirrors, watching out for cyclists and motorbikes filtering to the front of the queue. Looking around into other roads, taking in as much information as you can. Look out for obstructions on your new road, roadworks, pedestrians and cyclists. The earlier you see problems, the earlier you can start dealing with them. When turning right, you might not always be able to position your vehicle exactly where you want to. Here we are turning right, but there's a lot of parked cars on the right hand side of the road, and the road is quite narrow. Always leave enough space for even the biggest lorry to get through. You don't want to cause traffic to build up in other junctions. At some sets of crossroads, the traffic lights might have a different sequence. If we look ahead here, the oncoming traffic is now on green, while we are still on red. So when we get the green light, the oncoming traffic should be on red. If you are not familiar with a sequence of certain set of crossroads, maybe because you are new to the area, when you get the green light, move forward carefully and make eye contact with the approaching traffic. If they don't move forward, then it should be safe to continue. Now before we go and take a look at a couple of T-junctions with traffic lights, we mentioned earlier that there's another way of turning, and that's offside offside. This is usually determined by road markings. However, always be ready in case another driver goes for this type of turn. 
Now I could be driving around for hours trying to get this situation on video where I was turning offside offside. But here's a short clip of two other cars doing the offside offside turn. The black car seems to hold back looking for the usual near side and near side turn. However the silver car continues to move forward and opts for the offside to offside. Black car realises this and moves forward into the offside offside position. Now for this type of turn to work effectively, and this is where it sometimes goes wrong, is if there are more cars queuing to turn right, they need to leave a space for vehicles to turn. Now to explain this further, I'm just going to put a second car in here. You can see if the second car in the queue leaves a space, if it's safe, the black car would be able to make their turn. However, if this car moved further forward, the black car can no longer make their turn. Therefore, it would cause congestion. So whereas we mentioned at the beginning of this video, this turn is considered the safest option. Because both drivers can see the oncoming traffic. However, it does require good forward planning of the following traffic to leave a space for the oncoming traffic to turn. Now in this case these two drivers work it out between themselves reasonably well. Although the silver car does slightly overshoot the junction, this was more than likely caused by losing sight of the turning point. We will just replay the video through again without the pauses. Busy T junctions are quite often also controlled by traffic lights. Now if you are driving on roads like the ones that we are covering in this video, you will probably already have been covering junctions on your driving lessons and can already distinguish the difference between a minor road and a major road. If you are not sure it is really quite easy. Basically if you come to the end of your road like this one, you are on the minor road because it comes to an end. And the road that you are joining is a major road. However, if you are turning right into a side road like this one, you are turning from a major road to a minor road. And this is the one you will usually have to give way to oncoming traffic. Unless you have a right filter light, of course. So let's look first at turning right at the lights, mine at the major road. As always, always use your mirror signal manoeuvre routine. You really need to make this an integral part of your driving. It's so important. Check interior right hand door mirror. Make sure no one is overtaken and time your signal. Right hand lane. Lights on red to so stop at a stop line. You can see here that while we have the red light, the traffic on a major road is on green. Here we have a primary and secondary set of lights. Here you can use whichever light is easiest for you to see. Keep checking all mirrors while you are waiting, watching out for any bikes filtering to the front of the queue. Also keep scanning the major road looking out for any potential danger for when you turn. This is all part of the look phase of your mirror signal manoeuvre routine. Lights are on green, there is no oncoming traffic so it can go. Finally, let's turn right at another T junction controlled by traffic lights, but this time going from major to minor road. Again, make sure your mirror signal manoeuvre is strong. Check interior mirror and because we're turning right, the right hand door mirror. Signal right and position in the right hand lane. We have oncoming traffic. Remember, even if you have the green light, we're still crossing their paths, so we we'll still need to give way to them. Again we've got a secondary set of lights. The oncoming traffic's lights will start to change at the same time as ours. So be ready for any gaps or for when the lights change. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful in any way, please click the subscribe button to receive updates on any future videos. This also makes it easier for other people to find my channel.
Thanks again.